over the last couple of weeks we considered what to do in order to realize a realize an amplifier with a precisely defined gain and we saw that negative feedback was the only way to do it and how do you do how do you do it with negative feedback you enclose an integrator in the negative feedback loop so at least for constant inputs the output will be k times the input and what is k k is the division factor in the feedback path so you divide the output by k compare it with the input and integrate it we also saw that if you are only interested in the steady state behavior the integrator itself can be represented by an infinite gain amplifier what does it mean if you apply a non zero input to an integrator and wait for a long time when does an integrator reach steady state how long does it take to reach steady state if you have an integrator how long does it take to reach steady state huh? infinite time i mean it's a time constant is infinity right so it does take uh, infinite time so and after infinity after an infinite time it does go to infinity so you can think of it as an amplifier of gain infinite infinity okay and we also saw that while trying to realize an integrator how do we make an integrator you push a current into a capacitor we saw that the current source will have some finite output resistance so because of that as the capacitor voltage builds up part of the current gets diverted into the resistor so this means that the the capacitor voltage won't go all the way to infinity it will go to gm times r not times the input voltage so the gain will be finite which is true in reality you want the gain to be very large we'll see how large it must be but uh, you can represent the integrator in steady state as an amplifier with some gain a not okay so that's what we were doing and then this business of taking the difference between voltages and uh, integrating it or amplifying it so if you think of it as an integrator if this is the error voltage ve the output will be some omega u which is a parameter of the op amp times the integral of v or if you think of it as an amplifier which is the model we will use for uh, steady state for uh, some time to come so the output voltage will be a not times ve and a not has to be very large ideally infinity okay so we will use the amplifier model and have this right and this little thing this is known as the operational amplifier or the op amp because we use it so frequently people have uh, spent a lot of effort trying to optimize uh, how to make op amps using transistors there are many of them available okay they all have different parameters omega u and a not so you have to later evaluate whether it will work under the context that you have but the principle is the same so you have a large enough a not ideally infinity so that v goes to zero okay so that means that op amp inputs are virtually shorted and as i emphasized in the previous lecture this happens only if the op amp is in a negative feedback loop okay we'll see how to test for it later if you are given some arbitrary circuit you have to find out whether the op amp is in negative feedback or not that also can be done quite easily but if that's the case the op amp inputs are virtually shorted if the gain is infinity and analysis of op amp circuits become quite becomes quite easy as a result okay in this particular example if i had vi this would also be vi because of virtual short this current would be vi by r the same thing flows here so across this you have vi and across this you have k minus 1 ef vi so making a total of k times vi okay so that's how you go about analyzing op amp circuits in this case we already knew the answer but if you were given an unknown circuit that's what you would have to do okay now i also asked you what happens if uh,
Okay. So let me get rid of these things. What is the input resistance of the circuit? As seen from the input source. That is how much current is driven, uh, how much current is drawn from the input source? 0. So, what is the input resistance? Infinite. So, R i is infinite. Now, let us say the op amp we modeled it as an ideal voltage controlled voltage source of uh, gain A naught, but let us say that for whatever reason it has some resistance. R x there. Okay. That means, that the voltage control voltage source that models the op amp that itself has a finite input resistance. Now, what is the value of R i in this case? What is the value of R i? Huh? That value is R x. So, it is R x. Any other answers? Why? Why is it Rx? You had some other answer. Why? So that's why it's in this case it's easiest to imagine. First, you assume that there is no resistance. What is the voltage V here? Zero. If you connect a resistance across it, what, ha what happens? Huh? No current will flow. That means that no, there is no change in the circuit, right? In general, if you have a circuit, now that's for analysis you do, but you can write Kirchhoff's current law at every node in the circuit. Okay. Now let's say you connect a branch between some two arbitrary nodes of the circuit, and for whatever reason, the current through this new branch is zero. What happens to the solution to the circuit, voltages and currents in the original circuit? Nothing will change because obviously you have Kirchhoff's current loss, the, that has not changed, Kirchhoff's voltage law equations, those have not changed, so nothing will change. Okay. So, here it is the same, it is easy to imagine having no resistance and then adding it. Okay, of course, even if you analyze it, this should come out to be the answer, but this can look a little confusing because first of all, it should not be R x at all. I am not sure why you said that because this side is not grounded, right? It is not as though the input is applied across R x. But frequently people give some combination of R x and this resistance and that resistance and so on. Just because if you just draw the picture, it looks like you have R x and then some other resistance in series or something, but it has nothing to do with that. It is because of feedback that the input impedance, input resistance is infinite even in this case. Okay? R i can be 1 ohm or 1 milli ohm. If you do have feedback with A naught equal to infinity, the input resistance will be infinite. Okay? So, that is actually a great thing about one of the great things of uh, negative feedback. Remember, we are trying to make a voltage controlled voltage source. So, that means it should have an infinite input resistance. Okay. So, the negative feedback gave us a gain of k, but it also is giving you one more thing. So, even if the internal block that you use does not have an infinite input resistance, negative feedback will make the entire thing have an infinite input resistance. Okay. Is this fine? resistance here. Looking back into the circuit, what do you do to the input source to calculate the output resistance? You set it to 0. So, that means you short circuit this. Okay. So, what is the output resistance? What is that? 0. Why? What is shorted? Yeah. Yeah. So that 
that's actually a good uh, there are a couple of uh, different types of answers that people give first of all this itself is a voltage controlled voltage source right a naught times v e where this is v e so you may say that hey this r naught is zero because it's connected across a voltage source right you are measuring it between this point and ground which is across this voltage source so it is zero that is correct but the answer he gave is more uh, significant because this is, this is zero this whole circuit is a negative feedback so this has to be zero so no current flows through here or through that resistor so this voltage also has to be zero or in other words i mean to the same amplifier we have applied a zero voltage so the output is zero and it will remain zero okay so regardless of how much current you push in this voltage will remain zero so the output resistance is zero okay is this fine Now inside the op amp we have a voltage controlled voltage source and ideally it should have a zero output resistance in reality it will have some non zero output resistance okay so that means let's say its output resistance is some rx it's no longer an ideal voltage controlled voltage source okay what we use for the op amp what is the output resistance in this case what's the output resistance a not is still infinity okay what is it zero why Well, if I push in a current, how much is the output voltage? How did you conclude that? That's uh, still the same actually, because you know it is infinity. This error voltage is still zero, so everything that we reasoned out earlier is the same. Okay. So again, even if you start with an imperfect voltage source, negative feedback will give you zero output resistance as long as the gain of the op amp you know it is infinity. Okay. So, what I'm trying to say is, if a naught is infinity, then the input resistance is infinity and the output resistance is infinity for the amplifier, regardless of the input and output resistances of the op amp okay so a not equals infinity trumps everything or will be what did i say ah uh, yeah or will be zero the output resistance will be zero for the amplifier regardless of uh, what the op amp itself is right the op amp equivalent could be something like this this is supposed to be just a voltage control voltage source but it could have some input resistance and some output resistance right in fact in the problem set you solved for the circuit with some ri and some ro okay so the point i'm making is if you go back to the algebra and see the answer if a not is infinity the effect of these things should simply go away regardless of whatever they are of course a not is in reality not quite infinite okay you can't get infinity you can get a large value how large is large we can decide later but you can't get infinity so in those cases obviously having a large ri or a small ro that is just for the op amp will help okay again if you go back to the expression and assume that a not is finite you can see that everything approaches the ideal value if ri is ri as ri becomes larger and ro becomes smaller okay now if that expression is too complicated one thing you could do is uh, uh, take these one at a time i mean analyze it with only ri and only ro then the expressions may be easier to interpret but this is the idea right if you do have a very large loop gain you don't even have to worry about these things of course you can't get infinity so maybe it is good to have a high 
input resistance and a low output resistance okay now it turns out that in the current technology that we have in cmos technology then getting an input resistance of infinity that is getting an input impedance of infinity at zero frequency at dc it's not difficult okay are you doing solid state devices now or mixed semiconductor doing it now so have you started with mos transistors or diodes diodes i mean yeah, you are still in semiconductor yeah so you will later see that the input side of a mos transistor just looks like a capacitor so it won't draw any dc so it will have an infinite input resistance but the out getting an output resistance of zero is impossible okay this for sure is not going to be zero but with the negative feedback the output resistance can be very very small because of a not okay so again you can also see you can also evaluate did the tutorial last for the input and output resistances as well or only the gain yeah so input and output resistances you can compare let's say with uh, finite a not and non zero ro you can compute the output resistance you will find that the output resistance is much much smaller than ro okay in fact you will have a not in the denominator so if r not is 1 kilo ohm and a not is a million you will have 1 milli ohm of uh, or something like that some very small output resistance this is okay so that's uh, the, there are i mean usually there is a lot of confusion sometimes in the way things are described in books as well the reason we have a virtual short is negative feedback and everything else comes from that okay and once you have a negative feedback to make it ideal all you need is which is impossible to get but all you need is the, to have the gain to be in fact okay so now please calculate uh, v not by vi for this circuit i mean we can remove rx i don't need any of this stuff so all i want is the value of uh, v not by vi with finite a not okay please calculate it what is the answer a not k by k plus a not many ways to write this the way i like to do it is k times a not by a not plus k or k times 1 by 1 plus k by a not okay so you can see that for uh, large values of a not this factor will be close to 1 okay in fact this makes it even more obvious this is the ideal gain and this is some factor which depends on something okay so the relative error is k by a not right because you should have had one but you have 1 by 1 plus some small number obviously first of all uh, we were looking at how large must uh, a not be okay large and small are relative quantities so how large must a not be when we say a not should be large how large should it be huh louder please a not must be large meaning what compared to what k yeah a not must be much more than k okay and you see that the relative error is this k by a not obviously the more you make a not compared to k the smaller the relative error will be okay now they should also tell you the advantage i mean the point of using negative feedback because earlier i think uh, many of you had questions and i also mentioned it that we have control sources and using that we are making other control sources what's the point of this so let's say we are looking at k equals 10 so that means we are making a, we are trying to make an amplifier of gain 10 okay now this amplifier is made using some semiconductor components and we want this a not to be let's say 10000 and it turns out that because of whatever reasons it will be anywhere between 10000 and 100000 okay 
So, it is a large variation right, it is by a factor of 10, it is completely out of control. Now, what is the value of the amplifiers gain for these two? I mean just evaluate this numerically and tell me. What is it for uh, n naught equals 10,000? Huh? 10,000 by? Hey, I want the numerical value, man. I mean, just 9.99. How many nines? 9.990. Okay. Then uh, for 100,000. So, what you say is for a factor of 10 variation here, this is varying in the third decimal place, right, in the fourth significant digit. So, that is the advantage of negative feedback, it makes it insensitive to the what is known as the parameters of the forward block, okay. So, you have some amplifier and you can only make amplifiers using semiconductors, which means they will have all the bad sensitivity properties of semiconductors, but you do not have to worry. If you make A naught sufficiently large, then it does not matter how much it varies, okay. So, let us say we want and when we say we want a gain 10, we usually we specify how much would it be. I mean it cannot be, let us say we want a gain 10, you will never get exactly 10. So, maybe we wanted it to be within 1 percent of it or 0.1 percent of it. So, maybe this was the specification. So, in that case all you have to do is to make sure that this A naught is more than 10,000 exactly how much more it is does not matter because then it will be within these limits, okay. So, this is the reason why uh, we make control sources using other control sources. The original control source has very poorly controlled parameters whereas, what we have now does have accurately controlled parameters. Now, accurately controlled meaning there is some caveat there as well. So, let us say this is R 2 and this is R 1. So, V naught by V i in the ideal case is 1 plus R 2 by R 1, right. So, it does depend on the ratio of resistors, but it turns out that that can be fixed lot more accurately than uh, the parameter of the amplifier, okay. Any questions about this? This relative error of k by a naught does it have any? I mean, okay, we got it from algebra, but is it related to some quantity in the circuit? So, obviously, this is a question for which we do not yet have sufficient information. Now, we said we should have negative feedback. What does it mean? That is somehow there has to be a signal that is traveling in a loop, right. Something has to come back from the output of a block and get back to its input, okay. And uh, so, that is what we have defined as negative feedback, but we have not quantified it. Okay. Now, how do you quantify that using a quantity known as the loop gain? Okay. Loop gain is a property of the loop uh, where you apply the input is not relevant. So, I will simply set V i to be 0. Okay. What I am trying to find out is how much is the negative feedback? So, how do I quantify that? The way to do that is the following. So, 
first I identify where the loop is and then I break it ok and there is some direction for the loop for instance in this case the direction is this way right and then I apply a test signal ok and then I look at the return value ok. Basically, you do something and you get a kick on the back side how much is the kick that is what you are trying to find out ok. How much is it if I apply V test there what is the value of V return? Hmm? What is the value of uh, V return? What is that? You have to be louder, I cannot hear anything you say. Yeah. Minus? Obviously, if I apply V test here, what is the voltage there? Minus A naught V test and 1 by K appears there. So, V return is minus a naught by k times v test ok. So, this number here a naught by k is defined as the loop gain L ok that is excluding the negative sign. So, first of all the fact that this is negative that is what uh, is meant by negative feedback that is you apply a positive voltage here a corrective negative voltage appears on the other side. Okay. So, because we are we intend to make negative feedback circuits we exclude this negative from the loop gain definition. So, basically in general you break the loop you apply a test voltage in the forward direction of the loop you see how much comes back it will be of the form of minus something times the test voltage and that something is the loop gain and that number has to be positive otherwise you do not have negative feedback okay, because we have excluded the minus sign. So, this is minus L times V test ok. This is fine. So, this is a measure of how strong the this negative sign tells you that the feedback is of in the negative sense and then this number tells you how strong the negative feedback is ok. Now, how is this relevant the amount of negative feedback is it relevant here? How does it matter how large this is? How does it matter how large it is? Has it had any consequence? The error? You can see here, right? This is the relative error and it is exactly the reciprocal of this, ok. And this is not a coincidence of algebra. In every case, this is the this is what happens. Again, are you taking controls now or do you have do you have an XMS or something? Yeah. So, there you will see this in uh, more detail. So, the relative error in a negative feedback loop will be the reciprocal of what is known as the loop gain ok. So, the stronger the, the higher the loop gain the smaller the relative error ok and ideally if you had infinite loop gain which is the best case then you would have no relative error at all no error at all ok. So, to have effective negative feedback first of all if uh, something changes here, so around the loop some other uh, I mean the quantity has to come in the opposite polarity to correct it ok and also its magnitude should be very large relative to this ok. So, it is not enough to have let us say just a wire going around ok that will form a loop, but if this loop gain is very small then it is useless ok. The loop gain also has to be large is this fine ok. So, here I won't go like further into the for a way formally control systems negative feedback control systems are represented, but I'll just point out that this here is exactly the reciprocal of that. Now you may think that this is some coincidence for this particular circuit, but it's not. Any circuit that you make, if you have finite loop gain, you will have some term of this type. So the actual gain will be the ideal value 1 by 1 plus k by a naught. So, this is basically you will always have it in this form 1 by 1 plus reciprocal of loop gain 
okay so it will always appear there so the reciprocal of loop gain is the relative error okay so that's why you want to make the loop gain as large as possible so how do you tell if uh, a given circuit is a negative feedback now I mean you have some uh, circuit that is given to you, you can identify a feedback loop, something is going this way and coming back that way. So, is it negative feedback or positive feedback, how would you tell? Yeah, you basically try to evaluate the loop gain and then see if it is negative or positive. Now, the only simplification is if you are only asked to find the sense of feedback, you may not have to numerically evaluate the loop gain, Okay, you only have to find the sense, you do not really have to find the sign. Now, in this case it is uh, trivial because we have a single op amp anyway we know this is how it should be, but let us say somehow you were completely brainwashed and you did not know which side was the plus sign and which side was the minus sign. Okay. And you know that the circuit is a negative feedback, you just have to find out which of A and B is plus, so that the circuit is a negative feedback. So, what you do is what I just told you. So, you could simply break this okay, and assign some signs for it, that is one way to do it. So, let us assume that it is, I mean let us say you assumed uh, maybe even wrongly the first time around. So, you thought this was minus and this was plus. So, if you apply V test. what you get is A naught times V test here and plus A naught by K times V test over there. So, clearly that has positive sign that is wrong and it should be, I mean once you know it is wrong, wrong all you have to do is invert it. So, another sort of more systematic way of doing it even reducing the calculation is So, let us say you define the input voltage of the op amp in some direction, it does not matter which it is. Okay. So, this means that you thought this was the correct sign, if it is the other way around, the other way around is the correct sign okay. and then you define the output of the op amp, it is V naught. Okay. Then you remove the op amp altogether and anyway you can set V i to be 0. So, you calculate V e as a function of V naught. Okay. So, this is the feedback around the op amp, right? this is what comes back, this is the output of the op amp, this is the input of the op amp and this is the multiple of the output voltage that comes back to the input and this number has to be negative. If it is not, you have chosen the opposite sign, I mean the wrong signs for V e and you have to flip it, that is all and then you can assign the signs. So, in general you can do this. Now, of course, this circuit is uh, trivial, but you will have circuits with multiple op amps. Okay. So, for that you have to think a little more, because every op amp has to be negative feedback and to start off with, you do not know the signs of any op amp. Okay. So, first of all there may be a question of which op amp to start with. So, there is some may be a little bit of trial and error there, but when you are evaluating the signs for one op amp, you can assume the rest of it is a negative feedback and do it, Okay, because finally that is the solution you want. Right? You want every op amp to be negative feedback. We will come to those examples later. Is this okay? So, the op amp has to be negative feedback for it to do all the good things of giving you the virtual short and so on and we know how to evaluate it and we also know this quantity called loop gain which is to which is basically a uh, measure of how much feedback comes around. If you apply a signal at that point, what is the amount of kick that comes back to drive it in the other direction and that is a crucial quantity because that uh, determines the relative error in the negative feedback loop. Okay. So, some uh, system which has a negative feedback loop is known as a closed loop system, it basically means that there is a loop that is all and if you break the feedback loop that becomes an what is known as an open loop system okay. and this quantity is called the loop gain. Any questions on any of this? which one? This way. Okay. So, what I am saying is, 
So, in general let us say we have a circuit with one op amp or any number of op amps. So, I will represent it like this right. So, you could have any circuit and let me just for simplicity assume that it is linear. So, I have V i and the op amp is connected somewhere. Okay, or maybe I do not even know the signs of the op amp A and B. Okay, and this whole thing here, this simply represents the rest of the circuit because you have whatever circuit you have. Okay, and you want to find out the signs of this op amp. The way to do it is first assume, let us say A is positive. So, that means that the input voltage of the op amp you define it in that polarity and then you define the output of the op amp as V naught. Okay. So, the op amp itself is not relevant for this anymore. So, you remove this and you calculate V e okay. that is what comes at the input of the op amp. right? Now, what will be the general form of V e in this case? So, let us say I apply some uh, voltage here V test or V naught, what will be the general form of V? So, it is a linear circuit right. It will be something times V i plus something else times V o. Okay. V o is the output of the op amp. Okay. Now, this is not relevant all we are interested in is how much of the op amps output comes back to itself. Okay. The input voltage will change the input of the op amp in some way that we are not interested in. So, we can even set this to 0 that is what we normally do why have extra terms when you do not need them. So, all you do is evaluate this number through the rest of the circuit and now this number what should it be if the op amp is a negative feedback it should be negative. Okay. So, if it is not negative all you have to do is uh, uh, figure out that your original guess was wrong and the sign should have been that way that is all. Any questions? Okay. So, now given any certainly single op amp circuits you should be able to find out which way the sign should be for negative feedback okay. and multiple op amps also you can try there will be more tutorials in that direction. Okay. Now, we have had enough of uh, voltage control I mean trying to make voltage control voltage sources. So, let us try to make a different type of source a current controlled voltage source. Okay. What is the equation that a current control voltage source follows? What is the input to this? A current and what is the output? Some voltage and what is the relationship? Some R m okay. and this quantity is called trans resistance. Resistance is basically the ratio of voltage to current between the same pairs of terminals. Now, we are talking about ratio of a voltage here to current there. So, it is just called the trans resistance or transfer resistance. Okay. And we want to implement this using negative feedback. Okay. So, how do we go about doing this? What should we do? If we have to do, I mean, I have some equation that you want uh, that I want to realize, some function that I want to realize, and I want to realize it using negative feedback. So, what are the steps? We outlined this earlier. Dharmesh, Dharmesh, yeah. 
So, what should we do? What is the first step? Abhijit Pramod. What should we do? How did we do it for the voltage control voltage source? What is it that we did? I have an equation. So, first what should I do with that? What is that? Divide? No, no, that is the implementation detail man. What does the negative feedback control do? What is the function? Finally, what happens in negative feedback uh, control? Ah, compare something and what happens to that thing being compared? It will get, get driven to 0. So, first you have to figure out what is the what is it that gets driven to 0? What is it? Current. Which current? Huh? V naught by R m minus I i. Okay. So, basically some quantity, some other expression which implies the same thing as this. Okay. So, you suggested V naught by R m minus I i that may be possible in uh, some cases, but uh, we want a voltage source. So, I assume that the op amp output will be the voltage. Okay. Because finally, the integrator or the high gain amplifier which the op amp represents that will drive the output voltage. Okay. So, that is the output and I define my error as V naught minus I i times R m. Okay. So, this is saying the same thing as this and this appears to be an appropriate definition for the error. Okay. Now, you could have the same thing with a different polarity or some other expression entirely like he suggested. right? Now, what does it mean to have an input uh, I i? So, that means basically that I have somewhere a current source whose value is I i. Right? Obviously, I have to be able to apply the input somewhere. Okay? So, now the problem we are almost done. So, the op amp should drive the output V naught okay? and the op amp should be driven by an appropriate error voltage. Okay? So, and we have the input current I i. So, we want to compare V naught with I i R m or take the difference V naught minus I i R m and drive it to 0. So, now you tell me how I should go about doing this. What should be the what is that? Yeah. So, the input voltage to the op amp should be that quantity right V naught minus I i times R m. So, how do I get this now? First of all to generate the product I i R m this I i has to pass through R m and it turns out I need to get V naught minus this. So, I i times R m is in that polarity. So, if I simply connect it here at this point I get what? What is the voltage here? It is V naught minus I i times R m. So, at this point obviously means between here and the common ground of the circuit. Okay. So, I have not shown the ground here. So, that means that this is what should get applied to the op amp. Okay. Or another way to think about it is that I generate this voltage and I integrate that using the op amp and drive the output or I generate this voltage and use a high gain amplifier in the appropriate direction to drive the output. Okay. The high gain amplifier is basically the integrator only in steady state. Right? Is this okay? So, this is how it must be. <coughs> And if it is a negative feedback and if everything is ideal, the difference voltage at the input of the op amp will be 0. So, this is at 0 volts and we have a drop of I i times R m across this. So, the output voltage will be what? What is the output voltage? It is I i times R m that is all. Okay. So, what should be the sign of the op amp? So, that it is a negative feedback. 
I knew that I had to use an op amp to drive it, so I put an op amp. But now it has to, of course, be inside in a negative feedback loop. So what should be the signs? Which one should be plus A or B? Huh? What should be the signs? Yeah, please do. I mean, I just told you how to determine the signs, right? Calculate it and tell me the answer. What's that? A. Hey, you have to be louder. I just cannot hear. I mean, just A should be negative. Why? Yeah. Anyway, in this case, it is very easy. So, if you think of uh, removing the op amp and then defining the input of the op amp like this, we already know the expression for it, right? What is that? It is equal to V e and it is a positive number times V naught. Okay. So, obviously, the op amp has to be in that direction. Okay. So, V e should have been this way then V e would be minus V naught plus I i r m. The plus I i r m is not relevant, but minus V naught that means that basically you will get negative feedback. Okay. So, this is a current control voltage source or a trans impedance amplifier. Okay. Is this fine? What are the characteristics of a current control voltage source? What are the input and output resistances? Hmm? What is the input resistance? 0, output resistance. So, is that the case here? What is the input resistance seen by the input source? What is the input resistance seen between these terminals? What is the value? Sai Krishna. Yeah. What is the resistance between seen between those two terminals? How do you determine the resistance between any two terminals? I give you a box with two wires sticking out of it and I ask you to find the resistance. How do I do that? And okay. So, can you do that here or what is the alternative? Okay. So, let us say you choose the second one. What happens in that case? You apply current source basically that circuit is what we had already right. So, you can put it in any direction I test and what voltage will you find? Huh? Which voltage are we interested in now? Voltage across the current source. Okay. So, what is that voltage? Assuming an ideal op amp 0 right this is virtually shorted. So, what is the input resistance? it is 0. Okay. So, R i is 0. Now, it is important to note that R i is 0 not because there is some short circuiting wire somewhere, but it is because of negative feedback because we have assumed that this is a voltage controlled voltage source. right? So, the input here is actually an open circuit, is not it, but the input resistance is 0 that is because of negative feedback. Okay. So, we will continue from here.